Alright everybody, as promised, I am going to be doing a video series here uh, on Jamie's Lab. New channel, yay, re-uploaded all my videos, lost any likes I had, boo. At any rate, um, what I'm going to be showing you today is how to make security pins, uh, as well as how to choose the right security pin uh, based on which key pin you're using in terms of height. So. I have laid out pretty much everything I use here. I do have a light here uh, that is one of the Harbor Freight ones that has a magnifying glass in the top. Uh, when I'm actually making you know, pins properly like the ones I've already made, um, I'll usually be using that just so that I can get you know, in there old eyes and all that. So let's go over the tools uh, and then let's go over the types of security pins there are. Uh, in the next video in the series, I'll be covering each one specifically and how they interact with the lock, but we're going to go through all the basics first. So the first thing you're going to need is either a rotary drill, uh, Dremel, anything that can chuck pretty close. And let me show you here what we're going to be using for stock. This is three millimeter brass rod. You can buy it uh, Amazon.com, probably a bunch of other places. Uh, you can find a local hobby shop. Uh, this stuff is sold at, you know, for the model airplane uh, industry uh, or hobby industry. I, I don't know what the term for that is, but basically it's used for structural support. It's, uh, it's pretty strong brass. It is bendable if you were to get a big stick of it. And you, Normally when you buy it, you buy it in 100 millimeter lengths like this. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard metal, you know, tink, tink, tink. Um, but what it is, is kind of brittle. Um, it flakes. You might be able to see some of the little flake down on my desk from when I was testing everything out and when I was prepping these here, uh, those flakes, they're like really hard little sticky things. So I took my pin mat off. Normally, you know, when I do these videos, um, I have my Sparrow's uh, picking mat in front of me. Uh, but when I'm doing this stuff now, I'm just going to be using the smaller ones to hold the rod stock and hold finished pins here. Um, so you might want to get that set up. Uh, if you can't find a way to secure your Dremel or whatever, um, I strongly recommend you come up with something that you do uh, have that ability. Uh, whether it be a piece of plywood with the drill kind of, you know, strapped down or something like that. Uh, just come up with something that you might need. Uh, to be able to move around. Uh, but at any rate, get it set up and then I'll show you on my Dremel. And the reason why I have the wand here for you Dremel owners, um, this has this kind of chuck, which is the one that has the little, like, I guess you could say mushroom collets or whatever. Um, that's the one that you'll need for this. Dremel has the smart lock system or easy lock, whatever it's called, easy lock uh, system for its tools now, uh, which has this kind of mechanism here. So I just take my Dremel and hook it to that, and that gets me to the type of connector I need. I'm sure Dremel makes some kind of an adapter so that I can put a regular chuck on the end of it. Um, I just, I don't happen to own one for this. Uh, so, and besides I like this, it's portable, it leaves the motor over here, it's not whirring directly in my face. Um, you know, if, if you got something like that, it's a good way to set it up. But actually, I'm going to set these here because i got to make more scrap anyway, so I am going to actually show you how to cut, uh, cut these pieces here. The reason why I'm cutting it down so low on these is because it can only go in that far. So normally from here, I cut it, you know, I want to say about a centimeter, maybe, away. Uh, so that, you know, just cut it into three pieces. 
three pieces and uh, go from there. Uh, makes it more manageable, otherwise the end just wiggles all over the place. So, uh, yeah, at any rate, sandpaper. Um, I use just cheap, generic, Harbor Freight uh, 500 grit uh, for the pins. Uh, I don't polish, polish my pins um, because I think the rough texture on these security pins uh, changes the feedback in ways that makes the pins a little less predictable. If everything slides around easy, it becomes really easy to unseat pins that you've overset. Uh, and part of the game in this is trying to hang up a lock picker you know, as much as you can. You know, that, that's why you make security pins. That's why they were invented and used. Major manufacturers use them constantly, um, particularly a couple different types. Um, have a pair of scissors that is that you don't care about. This pair is probably about like 80 years old. I think it was my grandmother's or something. Um, you know, obviously we don't use it anymore. It's a straight bit razor. It doesn't have a like a traditional cutting edge. Um, you'll need calipers uh, or some form of measurement system. Um, I use this for, I guess you could say, prototyping uh, and measuring existing stuff because you don't want to make your pins too short. Um, you certainly don't want to make them too long and the measurements that you're working within will matter as you'll see in the next video. Um, this is a Elmer's Exacto uh, razor saw. Um, this is the extra fine one. I have really, really had good results with this uh, as opposed to other things. It's only like eight bucks online. Um, but this thing right here, one thing you have to keep in mind is the teeth only go in one direction. This is a saw that's meant to be pushed on something forward, lifted, back, forward again. Um, it's not meant to be, you know, like a sawing action. So when you're looking at the bit, the way it's turning matters. Now mine rolls over and turns toward me. If I set, if I set the blade like this underneath and you can't really cut over uh, because you can't really see exactly where you are in space, Whereas if you eyeball it and you pull the blade in from the back, you know exactly where that blade is going to cut on the rod. Um, if you're going to do that, though, the way the blade spins, it'll be going the wrong way against the teeth. If you want to come back, you got to hold the saw upside down. So make sure you remember that. Check your blade, whatever you decide to get. See which way the teeth are going and make sure you got the, you know, all the teeth going in the right direction. Uh, I totally botched up a pin because the blade kept skipping, didn't realize I had it backwards. So uh, you want, you know, obviously something you can put pins and parts and little things in here. I think Sparrow's little mini pads work perfectly for this. Um, you know, not much there. Files. This is, again, Harbor Freight. This is just a really generic 12-piece needle file set. Um, I think it cost me 6 or $7. I would like to get a good set of uh, files, but you know, honestly, these are working just as fine for what I do. I don't use them as often as I use a combination of the saw and sandpaper. Um, thousand grit, if you do want to make a smooth pit uh, pin for anything, um, go ahead and use the uh, thousand grit paper. So this is basically everything you'll need to make security pins. Um, trying to think, yeah, pin tweezers, obviously. I mean, you know, the basics. Just keep your basic toolkit handy. You never know when you're going to need something, too. Um, you know, I keep a cup on my desk, a Swiss Army knife, my all chamfer bit. Uh, there's a tub back here that's got all my regular hand tools in it. Just try and keep your workspace clean. And remember, th this brass dust while you're doing this is going to get on everything. You'll see a lot of residue on this pad when I give you a close-up and cover the different types of pins. Um, so let's continue on and go with some pins that I've already made and... 
there's one missing. Hmm. Okay. Whatever. Uh, oh. Oh no, I just got... Yay me. Um, Alright. So, I'm going to pull the camera down and we're going to get a close-up here under the light. Move this out of the way, actually. Let's just zoom all the way down. All right, so looking at the pins, I've got a couple different examples of certain types of pins around here. Um, these three right here are ones that came with the Sparrows locks that I purchased. Um, I believe they were in either the revolver or the reload kit, one of the two, uh, included a whole batch of these security pins. Um, and there are three major types you're gonna encounter in the wild across most manufacturers. Um, ASA pins are built on the same principles but they've got different shape different behavior they're really kind of cool uh, and a lot of different manufacturers have their own spin on them uh, these are pretty much the most generic that you will find um, the first one we have is a spool type pin now a spool type pin if you look at it let's see if this thing will focus focus grasshopper come on Joe manually. So with the spool type pin you can see that there's a bit of the pin that is like a solid pin if you can imagine it's a whole cylinder with just a section cut out in the middle that's really wide and what this does what this type of pin does is it gives you the ability to get a false set and you, sometimes it can be a really really deep false set uh, if the uh, the hollowed out part here on the edge uh, is actually, uh, I guess you could say, deep enough, or the bar is thin enough, maybe, I guess. Yeah, one of those two will work. Uh, and usually it's got sharp edges. Uh, sometimes these can have individual serrations on them, and I'll show you a serrated pin next, um, that will also catch on the keyway. Uh, one particular devious thing you can do is you counter mill your lock. We'll go over this in the next video, what that means. Um, I, I don't have one set up. I'll try and set up one for tomorrow. Um, but if it's counter milled, you, make, you can do things like make this edge go right into that. And make your serrations go right into that. Um, so it, it can get hung up pretty well in the keyway. Uh, the next type is serrated. And you can see this one here has three pretty, you know, pretty deep, pretty sharp uh, serrations on them. They're pretty narrow. They do a good job. When you pick a lock that has these, usually you have to use really light tension. Um, so from a strategy, you know, anti-pick strategy, uh, you can you can really mess with people if you mix these up with spools, uh, which usually require a little bit heavier tension. But those get hung up on the keyway, particularly if you've got threaded. A threaded Bible or a threaded core. Um, the last one, you know, the last major type that you'll run across is a mushroom pin. And if you look at it, I, honestly, they say it's mushroom because, you know, kind of like this, I guess. It would look like a mushroom. But to me, it looks more like a beer glass. Um, so, you know, whatever you want to call it, you normally it's a spool that instead of having a sharp edge at both edges, it kind of comes up to join with the outer, you know, outer surface of the pin. Um, so, yeah. Now, when you get into making security pins, um, let me set that back to auto. Okay. You got to focus? Focus. Oh, you always gotta walk it. I'm not gonna move the move them up individually for this. We can kind of get you know an idea of what's going on here. So when you're making your own pins, one thing you want to think about is maybe start trying to mix these technologies together and try and come up with something new. 
you know you could almost take this which is my pillow or my pin I call Kronos uh, because it looks like a hourglass uh, is essentially kind of the same principle as a, a spool mixed with a mushroom pen um, you know I've got this one here this one is my Harrier pen this one's really small and you can make these almost any size you just have to remember that whatever key pin it's sitting on top of it actually clears the shear line enough that you can't just bypass it also that the total stack height that you can't just push the key pin all the way up past the shear line again I'll show an example of this uh, in my next video on design and you know choosing which pin um, you know here's one that's kind of like a champagne glass um, that I made that's what I meant when I said really you know really tiny tiny pins uh, this is almost a T pin but it's got a plate here and the idea behind this pin is to catch on the key uh, on you know milling inside the keyway in other places um, there are some precautions uh, this one here I believe the uh, the reddit community named Larry if I remember correctly um, this is a barrel type pin this effectively you know you cut a ball in the middle of two plates so it behaves like a spool but whenever the shear lines on it it goes the opposite direction uh, of what you would think it would on a regular spool and if you don't if you're not expecting that uh, it can make things a little bit difficult uh, here's one here's the caterpillar pin uh, that I made uh, this one is basically just a serrated pin but it's serrated top to bottom and this one's good for those really deep 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 sets inside of locks where you're using a really small key pin because it's like one cut or you know almost zero cut um, you know you still can't push it all the way up out of the keyway because you need a longer driver pin with more going on uh, and this one uh, this one will confuse the hell out of somebody for a while if it's in deep. <coughs> you know, other ones are hybrids of other designs that I made. Uh, you know, this is a Harrier version uh, zero. This is one I actually goofed up. Um, you know, I got I got a couple cuts in there that kind of made it brittle on the edges, and I cut it too thin and. I just didn't decide to hollow it out. Sometimes you save your mistakes and it helps you learn from them. Um, and then the last one here is another version of Kronos, but this one is Saturn. Um, it is a Kronos pin that is a little bit thicker in the middle and has a very thin ring around the inside, which makes it hang up more difficult when the shear line's trying to go through the hourglass shape. So, and I'll, and I'll cover more about different strategies and things like that uh, and the types of things to think about. Um, but at any rate, so yeah, there's all the major pin types um, to start with. Um, let me clarify that. There are other types of security pins. I will be going into one or two of the special t uh, specialty, t is that specialty type pins. Say it right. Uh, in the next video, uh, things like pin and pin, uh, which you'll see in a lot of different manufacturers. Um, and then if I hopefully get some locks that I'm waiting on here soon, uh, I'll have even more uh, types of pins for you to check out and uh, more ways. So stay tuned. I'm going to keep adding to this series, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. All right, folks. Um, this video I'm going to go over uh, how to cut uh, a bar uh, for your stock. Uh, I forgot to do it in my last video. This is just going to be a little addendum. Uh, maybe I'll re-record the whole thing at some point. I don't know. But basically, you take the brass rod stock and you chuck it up. Now, what you want to do, make sure it's locked in pretty reasonably. And you want to spin it real quick and just make sure it's at least close. Part of the reason why we're cutting these into smaller, more manageable chunks um, is because it's not the straightest stuff in the world. It is bendy. It gets bent in shipping. Um, 
and it'll probably need some correction. But at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to be using my Exacto uh, Extra Fine, I think is uh, the specific model uh, saw. Now, you want to keep the speed probably at, you know, two notches up, whatever it is. Not very fast. And you can see this end's wobbling like crazy. Um, and that's, you know, it's just too long. Uh, so, normally I try and cut about, uh, I want to say a half an inch. Uh, and make sure you're holding the saw in the right direction with the teeth. Because the teeth only go one way on this. But, and we're just going to sit here and hold the saw firmly uh, but kind of be ginger and just lightly press it against the blade in one spot you'll feel it start to grab try and stay in the groove that you make if it wanders too much which this one is wandering like crazy uh, it's just more you gotta clean up later And there you go. Now what you'll do, this is the st size stock I end up starting with. Um, it's about, I want to say, close to 33 millimeters is what I'm going for when I cut it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and basically, if you just cut, you know, about a centimeter, about a half an inch, somewhere in that range, uh, away from the chuck with it all the way in this hundred millimeter stuff you should end up with you know three almost equal size pieces right, so let's cut the next one same thing see I skipped off right there That's something you gotta watch out for Especially when you're trying to do precision stuff. Up oh, and the reason why, blade backwards. Keep doing that. Ninja Vanish. Alright. So, got another one there. Another piece of stock there. So, now I got three more pieces of stock. Each one of these pieces of stock you should be able to get, depending on the length of the pin, anywhere from four uh, to a full six security pins uh, out of one piece. So, I, I try and keep a little bit cut ahead for stock yeah that's it sorry I forgot to put it uh, at some point in the other video um, talk to you later